Coming up on this episode of Theme Park Newsroom, I'll be sharing what looks to be the final day of operation for Jewel the Haunted House Strikes Back at the Alton Towers Resort. I'll be sharing the ride's history, a little bit about what's been happening over the last few months, and also my thoughts on, on the expected closing date, and also what I expect from the Jewel refurbishment. It's time for another Theme Park Newsroom here on Coaster Chell YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, thrill six of all ages, my name is Coaster Chow, Doncaster born, but built for theme parks, and your theme park journalist, and welcome to a breaking news noom update from Alton Towers Resort on the closure of Jewel. Now we've seen murmurings and whisperings, we saw Merlin Magic Making on site just a couple about a month or two ago, and now we have what looks to be the official closing date. Credit goes to Theme Park Guide for the actual uh, picture. Uh, there's a guy called Michael uh, that sent the picture into Towers Time, so credit goes to him. Uh, so please do like, comment, subscribe, click the case bell to name YouTube video. And for now, let's share with you exactly what's going on. So as you can see on your screen right now, fan dabby dozy, that is the evidence right there that suggests that everything will be coming to an end. 06 plus 09 equals the duel is over with the message, this is my house. So that immediately indicates that we're looking at a ho something paying homage to the classic attraction, the haunted house. Um, so that's where we stand on that piece of evidence. Now, for those of you who need a bit more history on this particular attraction, Gloomy Wood was created, the area that it sits in, in 1992, on the path between Katanga Canyon and Forbidden Valley, then known as Thunder Valley. For many years, there was only one attraction in this woodland area, the Haunted House, which later became Jewel in 2003, and then the Haunted Hollow came in in 2007. So, the Haunted House, the original attraction. So, this would take you on a tour of the house to meet some of its more interesting habit inhabitants, some residing in the seamlessly endless Great Hall, or the more sinister sounding Ghost Corridor and the Hall of Spiders. Once departing the house itself, the coffins would weave through the ghoulish garden before heading into the finale in a deadly looking swamp. The haunted house was replaced in 2003, um, 10 years after it first opened, well, it closed 10 years after it first opened and then reopened the year after in 2003, as Jewel the Haunted House Strikes Back. Um, now this brought an interactive element to the ride, with many of the features of the haunted house trans transitioning to the new attraction, with the only major loss being the swamp scene which disappeared until the Mad Professor's lab at the end of the ride. Now, of course, Jewel the Haunted House Strikes Back and the original Haunted House are both manufactured by Mac Wright. Uh, now, Mac Wright, of course, is uh, a very good manufacturer, a very well-known manufacturer. Uh, now, this cost £3 million overall, this traction, with a 6 minute 15 duration, an unaccompanied height restriction of 1.1 metres, uh, and a Max Rider height of none, with fast track and ride photography as well. Uh, now, if the the original ride opened on the 31st of March 1992, but it was rethemed and reopened on the 5th of April 2003 after its closure at the end of 2002. The track length is 300 meters with a capacity of 1,296 riders per hour with five passengers per, per car. And if you've heard the announcement, you'll know it's three people in the front and two in the back. <laughs> uh, now, let's share my thoughts on everything that's been shown in this video and also what I think will be happening to Jewel, the Haunted House Strikes Back. So there we are, ladies and gentlemen, thrill six of all ages. That is the latest on Jewel's future. 06 plus 09 equals the Jewel is over. The Jewel is done. 
the jewel is going away from Alton Towers Resort. First of all, do I think it was the right time to close the ride? Absolutely. For multiple reasons, but I'm going to pick out two most of all. The first reason is, look what's happening over at Nemesis for 2024. It's having this huge retract. So look at Forbidden Valley. You've got Galactica, you've got the Blade, you've got um, the Retro Squad ride, if that is coming back, which I don't know if that is yet. Um, I, I bet, but with Nemesis going away for about a year, you'd expect the uh, the Funk and Fly to return for maybe a third year or some kind of new uh, Retro Squad ride to uh, come into Forbidden Valley for that year. So you've got Blade, you've got a, a Retro Squad rides, whatever that may be, and you've got Galactica as well as the Blade overall. So you've got Forbidden Valley with about three rides. There. Obviously, Ripsaw's site is, no longer, is now home to the Funk and Fly or whatever Retro Squad ride there may be next year. Uh, Nemesis Subterra isn't being used anymore, um, unless it's for a scare fest or something like that, or maybe that is a second ride in a or attraction for 2023, along with this jewel refurbishment. You never, never know. But you wouldn't rule it out, would you? Uh, since we've seen stuff testing inside the building, everything all year round, so it can't be really a scare maze unless, unless there's some major detail and thought gone into it uh, from the start of the year. So. Again, so Terra still for question for 2023 as well. So you've got three attractions in Forbidden Valley, potentially four if something happens to Subterra next year. Then you've got Katanga Canyon, River Rapids, and Mine Train. So you've got five, potentially six rides overall in, the, in those two areas. Gloomy Wood is the pathway in between those two rides. A sixth slash seventh attraction, again, depending on Subterra, would add to that area or that section of the park, that whole entire section of the park, while Nemesis has its retracking for it to reopen the following year in 2024. So that's one reason. The second reason is it has needed massive work for years. And that's not even me being uh, mad or or harsh about Jewel because, you, you know, it's, it's hard to criticise Alton Towers sometimes because they do put on some wonderful events, they have a fantastic theme park and it's getting better every year. But... There are still areas that do need improvement, and as a theme park journalist, I have to be harsh but fair. So, one of the main attractions that has needed work for a long time now is Jewel, and I've said that for about five years now, even off camera. I've said it to mates of mine and friends of mine from the theme park industry and theme park enthusiasts that it's needed work for about five, six years now. It's when they introduced the LEDs that brightened up the effects that soiled the mechanisms a few years back. They gradually started making improvements over the last couple of years, last three, four years. Um, we saw the change to the soundtrack, change to the queue line. Uh, we saw little enhancements this year as well, over the last year or two. But again, just nothing made it go back to its full potential as an interactive shooting attraction. So it makes sense getting rid of the ride now or changing it up into something completely new or maybe paying homage to a classic attraction. So first of all, it helps with the Nemesis Reach throughout the following year and also Jules needed it for a good few years now. So two major reasons to why this is a great decision by Alton Towers Resort to close the ride, give it a massive upgrade and see where it goes. Now the next question is what's going to happen to the ride now? Obviously, there has been murmurings, there has been rumours of people being spotted around the site with plans. There has been rumours and murmurings of old haunted house drawings that speculates the, re the return of the original haunted house in a, maybe a brand new way. Um, it's kind of like Terror of the Towers in a way. It's sort of like you got the original, then you enhance the original with the Bloodfest Banquet, then you do the What Lies Within, then it goes away, and then you bring it back as the attic Terror of the Towers. It's kind of like that, where it's like the haunted house, Jewel, and then maybe bring the haunted house back in a new way, sort of like the haunted house returns kind of thing. So uh, I think that there's definitely room for creative potential with the return of the haunted house. Another route they could go down, I personally wouldn't be a fan of this, but I wouldn't rule it out. So if you don't agree with this, don't get mad at me in the comment section, please. Just get mad at the potential of this happening. And that is an IP. Something like, I'm just thinking off the top of my head here, Ghostbusters. That went into Heidi Park just a couple of years ago, a few years ago. So Ghostbusters would not be ruled out. It would not be ruled out at all because it is an intellectual property. We know how IPs are dominating the theme park market over the last few years. So you would not rule out that potential investment from happening. So Return of Haunted House, 
Ghostbusters IP, any other IP, horror IP coming into it, you wouldn't rule it out. I mean, Black Mirror, I mean, they've worked with Thought Park, are they going to do a multi-park deal with Alton Towers here? You Again, you wouldn't rule it out at all. Um, would you rule out Alton Towers working with a different IP? Probably not. Something like, pff, I don't know, maybe like um, something to do with Lionsgate, I know they had that partnership with Thought Park, maybe a new partnership with Alton Towers. Um, Stranger Things, I think, again, is another IP that could do a multi-year deal with. Um, and launch some kind of new outer world section of the park, sort of in between Katanga. So sort of, as you're leaving the African village before you go into the depths of the Forbidden Valley, you get transported and teleported into the outer world or something like that, or the other world, should we say. I don't have a lot of knowledge on strange things, but I know it's called the other world, or based around the other world. So, yeah, like an other world kind of mini section in between the African village and the depths of the Forbidden Valley kind of thing. Um, if you want me to choose my favourite choice, I would go with um, The Return of the Haunted House in a brand new way. So I get Matt Rides in, I bring in some new modern day dark ride technology. Maybe not a shooting ride, but again I wouldn't be against that, especially if they go with the Ghostbusters IP. Um, but I think that it's just an interactive dark ride. Not a lot of screens, bring in some screens, but not a lot of screens. New animatronics, n brand new lighting. I mean, look what they did with the Gangster Granny building. That used to be an old indoor playground, inflatable playground called Bubble World, with the cafe at the side. That's now the shop, and then you've got the building itself, which was the playground, which, of course, you know, before Bubble World, it used to be like the Crest Street playground, Bob the Builder, Tweenies, all those kind of themes. Now it's a proper interactive dart ride. And yes, there's some effects that I do want to see work again. The Bubbles was nice last time. I've got to go admit the Bubbles last time was nice when I was Road Gangster Granny. But you see what they can do with just a few screens and maybe some animatronics here and there or some cardboard animatronics, that kind of, that kind of thing. So I don't want to see, I want to see some proper animatronics and maybe a few screens here and there, but some proper interactive effects. Not not um, a shooting dart ride, but still some interactivity about it, kind of thing. If, if you get what, if you get my gist. So um, for me, I would go with the Return of the Haunted House in a brand new way, but I would not rule out Ghostbusters. I would not rule out another IP. I would not rule out an original theme entirely and getting rid of Jewel altogether. Maybe a spin-off story of Emily. Maybe use the Emily character from the Jewel story and reinvent her as her own sub-story for this new attraction for next year. Because, I mean, again, to hint towards that, look back at the message on the on the sign. It said at the bottom, this is my house. So could that, could that be hinting at maybe Emily coming in? Uh, could it be hinting at the spirits of the original haunted house taking back the property? Again, we don't know, but what I can tell you is if you are not, if you're still not certain about dual closing by the end of this year, you must be living under a rock in my opinion, because we know now, if we didn't know already, that Jewel is leaving the park. 2003 to 2021, yes, it's been on its last legs for a good few years. Similar story to Bubbleworks, how it was on its last legs for a good couple of years, and then they finally did something with it. Same with Jewel. Same with Flume, to be fair. I mean, I would like to have seen Flume stay for maybe at least another year or two more and give it a massive theming, but now we've got this GCI wooden coaster back in 2018 called Wicker Man. I enjoy Wicker Man a hell of a lot more. But you, you can see with the Flume, couldn't you, with the with the removal of the Imperial Leather sponsorship, sort of the end of the sponsorship, about a year or so, sort of on its last legs a little, a little bit, not too much, but a little bit, um, did, did dry up in a few places but then something was done with it. So it seems to be a bit of a Merlin trend, and that's no disrespect to the company or anything like that, but that seems to be a bit of a trend with recent attractions over the years, over the last few years especially, uh, where rides are on their last legs for a couple or a few years, and then finally something's done with it. So again, Kalkuku Land on its legs for the last few years, needed something done with it, World Dave Williams comes in, and the dungeon comes into Charlie as well. So uh, again, a couple of years on its last legs. So for me, I think that you know, Jewel going, it's great to see something done with it, and you'll bet your lucky backsides I will be there on the opening day of Alton Towers once again next year to try out whatever's coming to the park next year so and giving it a fair review as well. I am aiming, fingers crossed, for the opening day of this new attraction, so stay tuned for more details. But 
finally, to summarise everything, I want the Return of the Haunted House in a brand new way. I wouldn't rule out the IPs though, but I just want something that's going to be an upgrade on the previous attraction, which I'm sure Alton Towers will succeed in doing. So, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Make sure you do like, comment, and subscribe. And for now, I am Coaster Chow, your Donkster Theme Park journalist and Donkster Born but Built for Theme Parks. Keep living the coaster life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a jewel-tastic day.